your eyes on the far lane? The car on your left hand? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. He's just a good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. Y'all have ever noticed I've got my helmets up here. I love my helmets. I've got them all. And every time I look at them, it uh, pops up memories. So I'm looking at one in particular that is going to make me tell a story. So this one, whew, I need to dust them off a little bit. This particular helmet was my helmet for 2005. And those of y'all that know my history, yes, I was with Werner Enterprises for many, many years. It's a bell helmet. I'm a bell helmet guy. In 2005, I'm racing top fuel in the IHRA series, and we had already won. Let me think about this. In 2005, we were the reigning four-time top fuel world champions in the IHRA series. That year, we were freaking rolling. I'm telling you, absolutely rolling. We had already won every race of the season up to the point of the story I'm about to tell you here. I think it was four or five races into the season, we had won them all. Just absolutely had a car that was dominating. The other thing about this car that was pretty crazy and leads to this story is we had the balance of the car where it was literally just dancing the front end. This thing was ripping, absolutely flying. But this is five disc clutch days, and when the clutch came, man, it would just make the, it would give you a big pull. I don't know how to describe that other than think about hitting a nitrous button or passing gear several hundred foot down the racetrack. So when it would do this, it would just dance the front tires on the racetrack. So it's, it's just absolutely flying. Well, this particular weekend, my team, owned by Peter Lehman at the time, actually, he had just sold the team to Kenny Koretsky, Captain Chaos, if y'all know him, pro stock driver, had also drove top fuel, awesome, awesome dude. Well, we had put a deal together with Warner Brothers, not Warner, Warner Brothers Studio. If y'all remember in 05, there was a remake movie with Johnny Knoxville, Jessica Simpson, I can't remember the other guy's name, The Dukes of Hazard. Life is like a racetrack. That is so true. Sure, sometimes you crash and burn. But if you don't make the turn, you ain't never gonna learn. So, me being my age, I was a fan of the Dukes of Hazzard TV show, naturally. I think everybody my age that was into cars loved the Dukes of Hazzard. So, we're rolling into Milan, Michigan, with this wind streak going, a big points lead, and a car that was just flying. Maybe I should choose my words a little differently when I say that, but. So fast forward, they got promos going for the movie. Our car is orange, it's got O1 one on the side of it, it's got the Dukes of Hazard logo on the side of it. Car looked awesome. It's freaking Dukes of Hazard. What, what's not to look good with an orange top fuel dragster? So first round, whoop. <laughs> Rip right down through there. We're in good shape. We move into the semifinals. We're racing Bruce Litton, sponsored by Lucas Oil at the time. Bruce and I had went back and forth for the championship. For, for all my championship runs, he finished second. So semifinals, it's a big deal. We're in a huge battle. And the ensuing run is what I'm going to tell you all about. I'm going to show you the video. We're going to let it play at full speed. And then when it plays again, I'm going to talk you guys through what I felt, what I was thinking, what was going on. Check it out. Now that the ramp was finished, General Lee was raring to take off like the Yankees at Manassas. Long about now, I bet that boy wishes he had a parachute. General. Like a piece of cake. Got that one awfully close there, Hoss. 
<laughs> right, what was I thinking? Well, at about this point, I was thinking, yee-haw, because we were rolling. And the next thing you know, I done drove over my head, and I was on my head sliding down the racetrack. It was an absolute wild ride. <laughs> oh, man. Reliving that is absolutely crazy. And it's a lot of explanation to that. So you've done watched it a couple times. So here's what it was like for me. We're racing Bruce. We're number one in points. He's number two. It's the semifinals. It's the Dukes of Hazard Nationals. I'm driving the Dukes of Hazard car. Tree flashes. We're off and running. We're on a pretty good run. It shakes the tires. And after the fact, I screwed up, but it shook the tires and I pedaled it basically when the shake had quit. Well, I've already told you the car, the balance, she was pretty light in the front. So it starts driving up, the thing's headed up. And I look over and I'm like, I'm still in front. I still am leading Bruce, at least in my mind I am. So it continues up a little bit and I'm thinking it's okay, it's gonna be all right. You know, this. you're a big tough guy. You don't want all these races and championships. You got this. Well, as it continues to rotate, it reaches a point where all I'm seeing is the sky. And you could, you should have saw it in the video. You could see the header flames go out when the thing's probably, I don't know, four or five foot in the air or whatever it is. I abort the mission to beat Bruce. Step off the gas, grab the brake, it did nothing. This thing just continues to rotate nice and gently. And I knew I had messed up. I knew I was in trouble and I knew I was along for the ride. And so as it continues to rotate, when it gets close to straight up and down, we have in-car communications. I tell them on the radio, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's what I was saying. No response. So as it gets a little past vertical, I actually, as it's coming up, basically straight up and down, I actually hear the engine start running again. I guess it had lost fuel, I don't know. But I literally did my normal procedure. I shut the fuel off, I cut the switches off. And once it rotates and I'm starting to go upside down, immediate fetal position because I'm like, this is gonna hurt. I knew it was. And it rotates. It hits the ground. I'm like, huh, I'm okay. That didn't hurt. Back on the radio. I'm doing this because that's where the radio button is on the steering wheel. I'm like, it's okay. I didn't say it's okay. I said, I'm okay. I'm okay. No response, none whatsoever. So I'm now sliding backwards really fast, I might add. I'm just going backwards. But I had kind of relaxed because I'm just like, okay, it's sliding. It's going to stop here in a moment, and then I'm upside down, and I see the wall getting closer. As the wall's getting closer, I'm thinking to myself, it's going to catch the rear tire, and it's going to spin me around. I'm going to start tumbling. So back in fetal position, I went, and I'm just riding, and it's slowing down at this point, but the wall's right here. Then I see a little bit of flame licking, you know, on the wall, flickering. I'm like, man comes to a stop and I'm like, I'm okay. Back on the radio, I'm okay, no response. So one of the safety officials come running over, Howie Dalton, he's got a fire extinguisher, him and Mike Baker, they put the fire out and Howie's looking at me. And I'm literally hanging upside down in the car. The roll cage didn't touch the ground, the front of the car didn't touch the ground, y'all saw that. And he's like, are you okay? And then he starts to reach for my seatbelt. I'm like, don't touch that seatbelt. He's like, are you hurt? I'm like, no, I'm not hurt. But if you undo me and I fall out of this car, I'm going to be hurt. At the moment that thing was vertical, probably one of the quietest moments in my life. You know, it's like, man, you have made a boo-boo here. You screwed this up. But at the end of the day, all said and done, that very race car we flew the chassis builder in, which was Brad Hadman. He's like, it's not hurt. Believe it or not, the chassis was not hurt. Yes, it needed a body, a rear wing, an injector, wing stand, but it wasn't hurt. And it was definitely 
the worst wreck I've ever had in a top fuel car. And hopefully I don't have any more to, to make the highlight reels, that's for sure. So anyway, that's my story of blowing over the Dukes of Hazard car. Yeehaw! I've tried for the last three days to use this song, and for whatever reason, every single time YouTube keeps copyrighting me, so I'll sing it my damn self. Here you go. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they were born. Straighten the curves, flatten the knees. Someday the mountain might be. Making the way the only way they know how. That's just a little bit more than the law will allow. numbers that were just incredible. 